Hello and welcome to this video in the lockdown learning series where we're going to look at mixing down. So this is the process of turning your project in Cubase into an audio file that you can well, do whatever you want to do with an audio file. So you can send it to people, put it up as an audio file on SoundCloud, make a video for it on YouTube, even get it distributed to Spotify, etc. via companies such as CD Baby and so on. That obviously lies outside of the uh, scope of this particular series, but all of that's possible. So here you can see we've got the project working on previously. So this is just a simple bit, just made up live with a bit of an arrangement. So the arrangement is 57 bars or so long. And if you click down here where it says select time format, you can click and change to seconds. So we can see it's about two minutes long. We're going to see it's not quite two minutes long, but that's pretty much where we are. Okay, so you can change that. You can also change if you hit the full stop key on your keyboard, you can see the timeline is changing from one to the other. And that's the thing people commonly accidentally do and then go, why is the bars disappeared? So that's something to keep in mind, right? So what we're gonna look at is mixing down, which is a fairly straightforward process, but there are a few things you need to take into account. The first thing is the range of your mix down. So this is defined by the locators, which we saw previously. The easiest way to set your locators to cover everything is to do Control A or Command A if you're on a Mac to select everything. And then you hit P on the keyboard. And then you can see now the locators span everything. So that's a dead quick way to do it. But the thing you have to take into account is where your mix down finishes. Reason being, sometimes you will have a sound which will ring on at the end of a piece. So if this was just a normal drum part, it may not finish here, there may be some reverb, but in this case, what I've done is I've just made, I'm just gonna zoom in so you can see, but there's just a single note, and this is one of the annoying features of Cubase, is that it changes the octave of the way things are. So this note here is actually the same note as that one there, because it's a cymbal. So if I play it, you can hear that cymbal. Now that cymbal doesn't ring on much, but it is ringing on. You can see that it hasn't stopped on this output meter until around there. So if we'd set our locators to here, go, oh, it's finished by then, you would get something with it cut off at the end. So while it's not easy to deal with that necessarily without making a new project, etc., or having another program, if you just make sure it's long enough, you can always fade it out and trim it, but you can't, as a guy who used to work with me years ago said, oh, you can't cut it back on. Once you've cut it off, it's gone. So if you're concerned, just listen to the end and say, we'll watch the meters. I'm going to put the mixer on screen, which is F3. And if I play from there, we can see the meters are going down. Now this may be to do with the response of the meters, but it's not a bad idea to trust them and then go, right, we're finished there. And yeah, we're not far off. So you mess that up a few times don't worry about it because you can always go back and redo it because that's the beauty of working with a computer etc so once you set your locators the other thing you need to be aware of is the output level so we saw this briefly in the video on the mixer and the only way to be sure about this is to play the whole song and what we're looking for is this number here okay so not the fader number so that number there is the fader so if i move this fader up and down that number changes. That's just showing the level of the fader, but I'm gonna put that back to where it was, which as you can see, you can double click and then just type a number in. But it's this number here, the peak level that we've seen. This is crucial. If this is zero or above, then your mix down will be distorted, which isn't what you want. So what you wanna do is just make sure that that is less than zero so a negative number and ideally somewhere between minus one and minus 0 0.1 so here it's minus 0 0.2 you need to play the loudest part of your track or possibly the whole track because sometimes you may not be able to tell but in this one i know that this is the loudest part because this is where everything is so you can go to the mixer you can reset that by clicking here or clicking there so when this is peaked it will be red and if I just play this and go back to the mixer, we'll see a peak at some point. And sometimes it's not always apparent where the tiny loudness bit. Yeah, so that didn't seem any louder. 
but it is louder. So it's just building up, etc. So we see minus 0.3 is what's been seen. It might go up a little bit. But it seems like we're safe there. Maybe if we play through the whole track, it won't be. But I don't want to put you through that. Now, I'm just going to show you an example of when it's too loud. So if we put this to zero, and then play that section again, which I probably should set the locators around to make it a bit easier. And now if we look at the mixer and play it, we can see it's gone over. We get the red light here. You get the red light here as well. So that shows you that it's clipped. Okay, we've gone 1.2 dB over. So it's clearly too loud. We can just reset that there. And I will put the mixer back to that. But firstly, we're going to put it too low. So let's put it at minus 20 because we got a bit excited. Now we won't get distortion. Well, the, the, the audio nerds will have a bit of a fit about me saying that, but we won't get distortion distortion. But the problem you've got is now, as you may be able to tell, it's way too quiet. Yeah, what the audio nerds will be getting angry about is the fact that you're losing what's called resolution. So if you mix down at too low a level, you get a signal where you haven't used all the bits that are available. So you're not getting, effectively, you're not getting as high quality signal. I don't want to get too you know deep into the weeds of this, but you want to try and get this as close to zero as possible without going over. So that's why in this case, my value of minus 1.6 is going to be pretty much spot on. So those are the two things you need to worry about. So setting your locators and making sure your output level here, so this meter peak level, this is the number you're interested in. This number doesn't really matter. Whatever this ends up being is what it is. Don't worry too much about it because of the way that modern DAWs handle audio. You don't need to concern yourself if this is a high number or a low number as long as this is coming out okay. Right, once we've done that, just reset my locators. Once we've done that, we can actually do a mix down. Edit, you can access this in two different places. So either you can go to file, export and audio mix down, or if you hold down the shift key and either right click or two finger tap in the project area, you get a context menu and it's got audio mix down on there. I've taken to using that because I normally work on a 4K screen and the, the file menu is miles away. So this is much easier, but the, the they both lead to the same window. So this is the window where you set the options for what you want to do. So first thing you're going to do is call this my first mix down. And I always give them a number because then I know which one I've done because often I'll need to go back and fix it and it's useful to keep those old versions. The file path just depends where you're going to put it. This is in the max default music folder. You can put it wherever you want. Now, this is the probably the most important bit. So the file types, there's two file types you probably need to concern yourself with. One of them is WAV, one of them is MPEG-1 layer 3, which is MP3. So if you want to put something on CD or you want to distribute it to an online system, etc., WAV is what you want. So when I say an online system, I mean something like where it's going to be then distributed to Spotify, etc. If you're going to put it uh, on your iPod. Does anyone have an iPod anymore? Uh, on your phone to listen to or upload it to SoundCloud or whatever, you'll probably want MPEG-1 layer 3. Okay. The the other settings depend on which format you're using. So the sample rate of 44.1k is fine for WAV, but you would want it, if it's going on CD, you'd want it at 16-bit. Anything else, put it at 24-bit for the time being. Um, if you are going to do MP3, I would suggest that you then expand file type settings and then put that all the way up to 320, okay? Because that's where you get the highest quality. So if you want to laugh, you can experiment with these. And if you put it down at 16, you'll hear how terrible a low bitrate MP3 can sound. 128, weirdly, is the default. That's the kind of thing that was the default for distribution like... 20 years ago but 320 is is high quality and you can put it in high quality mode as well if you want to put a tag in there you can do that here as well so you can edit the id3 tag you can put in the title the artist album etc this that and the other 
I'm not going to do that today, but you can put all that stuff in there. So then when you play it back in VLC or Media Player or iTunes or whatever, it will come up with all of that information in there and allow you to search it. Now, once you've done all that, everything's correct. You can just click Export Audio. And you can see Cubase is doing it. Now it does it much faster than real time. So it will do it as fast as the computer's processor can handle it. So although that was two minutes of music, it did it in 10 seconds or so because it's it's not loading the computer up that much in terms of processing power. Once that's done, you can have a look at your file. So that's what we're gonna do next. So here we are in the music folder on the Mac and here's my first mix down. You can see straight away, you can just click play. And you can hear that playing back. So that's now an audio file you can put wherever you want. Obviously, if it was a WAV file, you could do whatever you want with that. But WAV files are much bigger than MP3 files. So generally, you'd probably want an MP3 file unless you're, say, if you're going to burn a CD or you're going to put it onto uh, an online distribution system, then you would want a WAV. But the rest of the time, you probably want an MP3. So that's how you get your music out of Cubase and out into the world. I hope that's been useful and I'll see you again soon.